give you an idea how bad it is. Dave Camp, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, he estimated in, when he made his recent reform proposal that just the process of collecting corporate and state tax, uh, personal income taxes costs $168 billion a year, which means that that's about 10% of what's collected, 8%, depending on how you count. That's an enormous burden. And as I've said, it's, really, it's only special interest provisions that just the summary of his reforms, not the actual reforms, just the summary is 194 pages. And I maintain that it is not comprehensible unless you have a degree both in economics and in law. Uh, it, it is truly uh, Isaac Newton's shadows on the cave. We only see the shadow of reality. We never see what it really is. Uh, it, it, it's a morass. Uh, I would propose a very simple tax system which would make absolutely everybody angry. But you know the old story is if you make everybody upset, you probably get it right. And that is to have essentially a valuated tax that excludes nothing to replace the corporate and personal income taxes. It excludes nothing. It even applies, you're going to see one of the benefits of tenure, to college tuition. Contributions to your church, synagogue, and mosque. Basically, anybody who gets a check or a credit card payment or cash has to pay the tax on its revenue and in turn gets to subtract whatever taxes it pays on whatever it buys. So it's not a turnover tax, it's a valuated tax that way. In 2013, the Treasury collected $1.6 trillion in corporate and personal income taxes. If this model had been in place that year, an 11 or 12 percent sales tax of the kind I just described, closer to 11 actually, on all private payments uh, would have replaced the corporate taxes. That sounds high, 11 percent, 11 percent sales tax, but take out your pay stub and look at it. That line of personal income tax is gone. And uh, there would be no more headaches associated with valuing inventories. Strictly, this is strictly done the way a grocery store does it. What are your receipts? What are your expenditures? What the time frame is for? What did you spend that year? The sales tax would be stated. You get to subtract that from the amount you owe. So no more valuing inventories, no more LIFO and FIFO and Alpo and what have you. Uh, no more calculating depreciation on capital equipment. And think of all the accounting and legal fees that would be saved. Uh, also, it would end the problem of overseas earnings for corporations. We have to deal with the legacy issue of those that are parked abroad now. But some sort of deal on that could be made. Only tax half, well, only one half of it back. And if you bring it back in the next five years, you know, only half. And we can use that to pay for some of the other transitional issues. Uh, businesses and institutions would file a three line return how much they collected, how much they paid, and the difference. And individuals would file no individual income tax return at all. You would have no more April 15th. April 15th would just be another day on the calendar. It would be a day between April Fool's Day and Memorial Day. In fact, we could make it a national holiday and all the money we say to, to celebrate our freedom from income taxes. And then whoever might propose an income tax again would have the burden of explaining to Americans why they would not have April 15th off. In fact, I suggest we might christen it Tea Party Day. Except that that would have political, you know, overtones and we don't want that. So we might call it Coffee Break Day. Uh, now, the value-added tax has two basic distributional problems. And some of it is in the eyes of the beholder. One is that it is a proportional tax, it is not a progressive tax. 
because it taxes everybody when they actually spend their income. And sooner or later, all income gets spent. Uh, so it's not progressive, and, and as we hear daily from the White House, uh, we really want a progressive income tax structure. And however progressive it is, we want it to be yet more, yet more progressive. And with the Republicans, we, they're always denying that anything they would do would make it less progressive. So we have to accept that that is an ingrained part of the culture. Now, one of the things we could do is um, raise the tax from 11% to 15. That would permit us to give each child and every American over the age of 65 an annual payment of $4,000. That would make the tax system progressive. Since we don't have personal income tax returns, just give it to everybody. Don't worry about it. Child, like basically, a child provision. And the $4,000 would be in addition to old people would be in addition to what they get from Social Security. Now, why give it to old people as well as young people or children? The answer is that there's a one-time problem with the elderly. They have already paid taxes on their income going in. The income tax would go away. And now they'd be faced with a consumption tax on the way out. So having some sort of phased out elderly allowance similar to the child care allowance would solve that problem. Now, if Congress wants to spend more, it could raise the rate further. But since it would be on the price of everything, you know, the next time uh, somebody comes along and wants to give people something for nothing, they would actually see the price tag. When they go down to the supermarket to buy ice cream or groceries or beer or whatever it is they buy, the rate would be higher for the allegedly free ride they're getting from the government. They would see. So you'd actually have a chance to evaluate whether something's worth it. Now, granted, wealthier people would pay more because they shop at Neiman Marcus and buy Gucci purses. So, yeah, it would be, they would pay more and, and still. People with low incomes would still probably value government services more than what they're paying for it, but it wouldn't be zero as it is now. The ability to buy votes by giving people a subsidy of some kind would go away. Or at least it would be muted. And the veil would be taken back. And it would be one of the things that economists like most, it would be transparent. Nothing like information illuminates inefficiency. Nothing like information illuminates inefficiency. It's elegant, it's egalitarian, it's efficient. Such a value-added tax, without exception, would give Americans the tax systems and, and reforms they want. But the real problem with this is the moment you suggest it, people are going to have things that they want to exclude. And here my background is a trade negotiator and trade official, trade scholar, I think pays out. When we got started with the modern era of free trade agreements, which was with the Canada-US free trade agreement, the first thing the Canadians said to us was, well, couldn't we exclude certain sectors? And we said no. Because once you exclude one, then there'll be another, and then another, and then another, and another. It's all in or all out. And also, I would suggest to you that we now live in a secularized era. You know, I go to church, and I was served on the vestry, and I did the finances of St. John's Church in Georgetown, and all that business for a while. Um, so, you know, I have a vested interest there, but I don't see why anybody should be exempt from taxes in a modern society. And I think that is a good grounding principle, just as progressivity is. That everybody should have a stake in the game, everybody should have some. What are they, something on the table? What? Is, what? Skin in the game. Skin in the game. Professors aren't allowed to use language like that. Because, you see, I'm only allowed to go to campus two days a week because I don't sound erudicious enough. Uh, or, or dignified. I don't behave dignified like this. In any case, uh, that's my proposal. And I think it makes a lot of sense. It would be rebatable on the border. And if we went to that hole, absolutely whole, we probably go from being disadvantaged in trade because of the rebates and what have you to advantaged in trade. We would still have the hangover of the health care costs and those contributions, which are higher here. But in terms of the combination of value-added tax, corporate tax, income tax, we would be ahead. And I think that would be really, really good. Anyway, that's my proposal. Thank you.
Thank you, Peter Bracey.